Here is a world of communication, bringing together all people in a new era of understanding. Als digitalen Maoismus, liebe Zuschauer daheim an den Empfangsgeräten oder von wo auch immer Sie uns gerade zusehen, als digitalen Maoismus schmähte einst der US-amerikanische Medienphilosoph Jaron Lanier Gemeinschaftsprojekte im Internet und schimpfte über stumpfen Kollektivismus und die Idiotie des sogenannten Schwarmgeistes. Diese Form des Kulturpessimismus ist dem Wikipedia-Gründer Jimmy Wales völlig fremd, der bezeichnet sich stattdessen als unverbesserlichen Optimisten. Bei aller Kritik an Faktentreue und Manipulierbarkeit der freien Online-Enzyklopädie Mittlerweile hat die Wikipedia sich nicht nur zum wahrscheinlich unwahrscheinlichsten, sondern auch zum wahrscheinlich größten Wissensprojekt der Menschheitsgeschichte gemausert und kann somit wohl problemlos die These widerlegen, dass Optimisten lediglich schlecht informierte Zeitgenossen sind. Über die Kunst funktionierende Communities aufzubauen, über sein wikifiziertes Suchmaschinenprojekt über seine Abneigung gegenüber dem Begriff Crowdsourcing und über dieses, jenes und anderes habe ich mich kürzlich mit Jimmy Wales unterhalten. For the Wikimedia Foundation, which is a non-profit organization that runs Wikipedia, uh, I'm now just one of seven board members. I, I've stepped aside as chair of the board to focus uh, some of my time on other projects. Um, within the community, I still hold... Um, Uh, you know, a position, um, you know, within the community, uh, particularly in the English Wikipedia, I'm very involved on a day-to-day -day basis with uh, uh, dispute resolution and, and discussing policy and things like that, and then also globally for policy discussions. I still remain very active uh, in those things. Um, I think pretty important because uh, the... The failure of Newpedia and, and watching how that happened and why really taught me a lot about uh, what I call community design, uh, the design of uh, social rules to allow people to build good work. Um, it was really a, a, a top-down kind of mechanism. Uh, in my talk today, I talked about the, the idea that people design Uh, a lot of software and a lot of communities around the worst possible behavior. Uh, I've come up with a very simple analogy to help people think about things in more of a wiki-like manner. Uh, and so the first thing that I ask people to do is to stop and imagine that you've been asked to design a restaurant. So you're going to design a restaurant from scratch and uh, you, can, you can do anything you like in this restaurant. You can design it however you want. And so you think to yourself, well gee, in this restaurant we're going to be serving steak. And whenever you're serving steak, uh, one of the things is that the customers are going to have access to knives. Uh, and of course, whenever the customers have knives, they might stab people. And so therefore, for our restaurant, for a good design, we'd better keep everyone in a cage. Uh, well, this makes a bad society. Uh, this is not the way we think about restaurant design. And when I put it this way, yeah. When I put it this way, most people get it immediately. They say, ah, I see what you're saying. Uh, it is true that people can do harm, but in general, we should not design our social institutions around assuming the worst. We shouldn't look for every possible bad thing that people might do and design around this. That was Newpedia, exactly. Uh, you know, we thought of all the bad things people might do and designed a system around that. Um, so that was quite instructive. The other thing that was important about the, the failure of Newpedia is that It meant that for uh, nearly two years, we had a, a nice community of a couple hundred people who were talking about writing an encyclopedia, but not actually making much progress. But we had at least begun thinking and talking and discussing a lot of issues before we started. So we had a lot of that sort of uh, community uh, building, you know, under our belts, so to speak. So it's, uh, it's not easy, uh, it's very complicated, but it's also very human. Uh, it's really, uh, it has very little to do with the software really. It has a lot to do with people. Um, and uh, I, I wish I knew a, a simple set of secrets because I think there are a lot of ways to get it wrong. I think um, having the right personalities and the right people involved early on is really important. Um, 
having, uh, you know, the idea that, um, well, while there is a right and wrong, we need to be as flexible as we can at accepting lots of different viewpoints. And uh, uh, it's the, the way I describe it, I think uh, a, 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 the way a healthy community should work, um, it's uh, you, you face a lot of the same trade-offs that you face with a, a community police force uh, in that, well, you... You, you want some law and order, right? You want to go out on the street, and if somebody is going to, uh, you know, uh, rob you or mug you, uh, you want somebody to intervene and to protect you from that. And so you want a safe space so you can go about your business. At the same time, you don't want that police force to become the problem and become very controlling and top-down. So I think if you think of those terms, then you think about, well, what do I want from the leadership in an online community well, it's very similar. I want them to help protect me against uh, people who are just undermining and being mean and things like that. And at the same time, I don't want them controlling everything that goes on either. I want to have a safe space for dissent. You want to be able to protest without getting kicked out for protesting. Um, so those are those. That's really the way that I approach it. Wiki News has definitely not. Uh, grown as fast as, as any of us would have liked. Uh, I think uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one reason is uh, the, the doing live daily news updates, um, they have a very big competitor, which is Wikipedia. <laughs> so lots of people work on, on current news events in Wikipedia, and so uh, that's sort of duplicating what's going on in Wiki News. Um, the other thing is that the software that they're using currently at Wikinews um, has not been uh, the most uh, designed for that workflow. Uh, and so that's been a, that's a sort of a, a subtle technical problem, but the workflow of news is very different from the workflow of an encyclopedia article, and the software has not really supported that very well. Uh, so that's been a problem. Yeah, so uh, it's interesting because I feel like he, he, he has portrayed my position uh, inaccurately. Uh, I've actually always been a very much a moderate on the issue of advertising. I take a middle position, um, which is, uh, you know, I don't want to see advertising in Wikipedia like lots of people, but we are a charity uh, with a goal of distributing free knowledge to everyone, and money could in some cases um, benefit that. Um, what we're doing right now is exploring other revenue options. Um, we get enough money from donations to survive, so survival is not the question. Um, the real question is what opportunities are we missing by not um, accepting a large amount of money? Uh, there's a lot of complicated trade-offs there. So uh, one trade-off is our, our public image or our brand name um, is quite good and quite strong, uh, despite all the controversies, people mostly love Wikipedia. And people at least understand when you go to Wikipedia and you read an article about uh, General Motors, well, you don't see an advertisement for the new Corvette next to it, and so you don't have that question of uh, bias that you would have. That's an important issue that I think we shouldn't uh, leave aside. I mean, certainly uh, taking the short-term route of saying, let's put ads in Wikipedia because we can get money to, for our charitable purposes. Um, well, that sounds quite interesting, but it's really a big decision and not one that we're really going to make you know, anytime soon. Uh, there's no hurry. Uh, if, we, if we find uh, five years from now we're still you know, this very large website and we haven't made progress in the developing world at all and we feel like we're not fulfilling our mission, then we might uh, consider it more. But in the, in the short run, there's no immediate plans to do anything. What's interesting is we we see in the in the software world we see a variety of different models. Uh, there's the the Linux kernel, which is uh, very much um, about you know mostly still individuals contributing. Some of them are contributing on behalf of a company where they work. Uh, Apache is really more uh, organized, as I understand it, as a uh, consortium of companies are all involved in it. And there is the nonprofit organization, but which is not. Um, it's not something people think of as a charity. It's more of a, a trade consortium of companies who have an interest in the browser. Uh, then we have a, a for-profit company like MySQL, which releases free software, and they sell services and things like that. Um, so I, I think there, there are a lot of lessons from maybe some, from some of those for-profit organizations um, as to how companies can benefit. 
Uh, for me, uh, one of the things I'm on my soapbox lately about is uh, there's this uh, term that's become a little bit popular in the last year or so uh, called crowdsourcing, which I think is just a really, really bad term. Uh, I really don't like it at all. Uh, I think that anybody who's trying to move into this space uh, and they think of their business model as crowdsourcing, they're really missing the point. Um, they're really disrespecting their community. Uh, they're thinking of their community as being cheap employees. But volunteers aren't employees. It's a totally different set of motivations. It's a totally different world. And you really have to think of them as um, your customers, really. I mean, even at, at Wikipedia from the very early days, um, I talked about customer service, meaning people come and they want to write for the encyclopedia. That's a customer to us as a community, as an organization to say, this is somebody we need to treat very well. I've been told that's a very American way of looking at the world, is that treating someone like a customer means be nice to them. Uh, I don't know if that's so American, but uh, uh, I think that, that crowdsourcing ideas really can be poison for, for people if they're thinking in that way. Uh, you know, if you were uh, doing something like, you know, running a uh, bowling alley and you imagine that, well, what we're going to do is we're going to produce bowling and we're going to produce it very cheaply by crowdsourcing and letting the general public come in and produce the bowling. Well, this is like, it makes no sense, right? That's totally wrong approach to thinking about what you need to do to have a successful bowling alley. What do you need to do is you need to think of the people who are coming in to bowl as your customers and that you need to provide them with the services that they need to enjoy themselves, which means you sell them beer and hot dogs. You don't say, well, we won't have beer because we know that uh, every time there's beer, uh, the quality of the bowling goes down, right? That's not what you're in business to do. You're providing a place for people to do whatever it is they enjoy. Um, and the crowdsourcing model would say, well, yeah, don't give them that. Yeah, they may enjoy it, but it'll cause the work to decline in value. Mm, well, no. What a lot of people are missing there is uh, the, the real ideas of community. Uh, that people are, people come to your website um, for, for something like that, right? They're not there to do work for you, right? Um, they, they're, they're happy if there's some byproduct which is beneficial to other people. But generally people want to go online in a situation like that and make friends and uh, even, you know, they don't, they don't think of it this way, but they want to make enemies uh, in some cases. I mean, you want to find somebody you disagree with uh, and hopefully have a, an enjoyable and respectful sort of tussle with them. Um, all those kinds of things are what people are interested in doing. And a lot of uh, websites around uh, Web 2.0 world are really missing that. Um, others get it quite well. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Flickr, for example. That's not, people don't go there to argue, but, um, you know, they do a good job of, of thinking about, you know, not how do we make our pages uh, better for the general public uh, to see ads, they think about how do we make our, our site better for people who want to upload photos and share it. So they think of that as their, as their customer. So I think it's, uh, it requires uh, long-term thinking, not short-term thinking. Right now we're in the very early design stages, so a lot of the questions are very much up in the air. This is the cover of a magazine last month in the U.S. It has my picture. It says, uh, Google's worst nightmare. Uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, but my mother bought 10 copies, so, <laughs> so anyway, that was fine. Uh, there are certain principles that we set into place um, to guide the work. Um, in terms of the actual functioning, um, what we're currently envisioning is basically three levels of participation. Uh, one, uh, in terms of the algorithms. Uh, the actual ranking algorithms. That's an open source, traditional open source software project that programmers can participate in and, and share in and help us out in lots of different ways, uh, release their code for other people to use and so forth. Uh, but that's participation only by programmers. It's not something that the rest of us can do. Uh, another level of participation would be um, people just coming to the website and giving feedback with thumbs up, thumbs down, ranking, you know, were these good results or not, is this a quality website or not, rank it with your toolbar, those kinds of things. Very uh, limited interaction, not so much community participation, but just um, giving feedback in various community-like ways. Uh, and then finally, the community participation, which is, would be the area where there will be the most similar 
to the Wikipedia community with a network of trusted people who are doing, um, well, if we can make it enjoyable for them, doing different kinds of editorial work um, to guide people uh, in various ways. So those are the three broad ideas, and the details of how we work that out is just really very much up in the air right now. So my most optimistic view uh, would be uh, that uh, you know, we see more and more community participation under open licenses, um, which enables a, a culture of sharing and participation, um, where we have a very uh, diverse uh, participation from lots of different kinds of people. We avoid certain kinds of top-down control, which I think are unhealthy. Um, and so that's that's the good side. The, 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 the negative view or the things that I would be concerned about um, I'm very concerned about uh, software patents. Uh, fortunately, so far, Europe continues to reject these, um, which is very good, uh, both from a global perspective, but also from the, uh, in my opinion, from the perspective of the economy of Europe and the health of the software industry in Europe. Uh, certainly handing control of your industry to the large American companies that would dominate very quickly it seems like a bad idea. But uh, even more than that, I worry about patents because the way that they are uh, implemented, uh, they really pose a threat to creativity. Uh, for something like Wikipedia, um, you know, just because we invented it ourselves doesn't mean somebody didn't invent it six months prior and prevent us from using it. It, it becomes very hard to have free software, uh, open sharing culture, uh, when so many different things can be patented. Uh, and, the, the reason we have patents, the beneficial reason to have patents is to encourage innovation. I see no real problem with innovation in software right now that's not being, you know, we have copyrights which do enable proprietary software to, to get returns. We have broad open communities which are quite creative. So uh, if my concern would be that patents will put a, a dent in this whole movement. Uh, and then there are other things, uh, you know, we would hate for the Internet to end up um, like the uh, the mobile phone space, where the carriers still have a, just a stranglehold on innovation, and uh, you know the the uh, so many people have very obvious ideas about cool stuff you could do with a mobile phone that you just can't do right now because the platform's so locked down, nobody can actually do much with it. Um, we wouldn't want to see that spread to other areas through DRM and, and things like that. So. I'm not too worried about that stuff, though. That's the nightmare scenario. I, I'm so optimistic. I don't see it happening. Der Optimist hat nicht weniger oft Unrecht als der Pessimist, aber er lebt fröhlicher, sinnierte eins der ungarische Clown Charlie Rivel. In diesem Sinne stellen wir ganz fröhlich und optimistisch eine kleine Frage in den Raum. Was ist eigentlich Web 2.0? Web 2.0 wenn du vor lauter Blockstammtischen nicht mehr zum Bloggen kommst. Vielen Dank. Liebe Zuschauer, das war es auch schon für heute. Ich verabschiede mich und wünsche Ihnen eine inspirierte Woche. Bleiben Sie uns gewogen und schalten Sie auch das nächste Mal wieder ein. Bis dahin bleibe ich Ihr elektrischer Reporter. Was uns taub machen könnte gegen den Lärm, ist die Antwort auf die Frage, ob es Fortschritt gibt. Wenn ja, dann ist im gelebten Moment die Möglichkeit eines individuellen Wirkungsquantums eingeprägt, das auf ein Omega hinstrebt. Daran scheitern ist fruchtbarer als jeder Erfolg.